is flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. That's right. It's not the only thing we have rolling through our veins. We got Dramamine and Pepto Bismol rolling through my veins the last 48 hours. It's a reckless speculation Thursday, and it's also a, a hug your toilet Wednesday earlier this week. Glad to at be least, back with you, boys. Hey, Doogie. at least you're warm, man. At least you're warm. <laughs> Dukes and I, AJ, we're freezing our tuchuses off here. <laughs> Phil, I am glad you are well. As I said off mic, I wouldn't wish food poisoning upon my worst enemy. I'm sure it's there's worse. Bad. Like I'm sure kidney stones would be worse. It's mm. not literally rock bottom. But Kidney it's stones. gosh darn close. Like, as somebody who's been there, you don't want to be there. So I'm glad you're no longer worshiping the, the porcelain god known as the toilet. I will say there are worse places in the world to be stranded and have flight cancellations all week than Scottsdale, Arizona. I didn't make it to the Gophers game for obvious reasons, but uh, it was nice seeing a bunch of maroon and gold sweatshirts wandering around uh, the Phoenix area in celebration. Another bull victory for P.J. Fleck. That Chase Field too. What a glorious, what a glorious no, job! And they, and they like it's pouring rain, and they got the roof open for a right. pregame festivity. Like, what are you guys doing? It's ridiculous. What a debacle! Could they have blown that <laughs> any worse? Like, was no. it that big of a deal for a paratrooper to parachute <laughs> in? Like, who cares? There were what ten thousand people in the stadium. It wasn't that much for TV. I mean, they showed it briefly on TV, but like, shut the damn roof. I mean, that field was just a <laughs> joke. The title of your book, Dukes, Shut the <laughs> Damn <laughs> Roof. Oh, the Dukey man. story. Oh, but, yeah, man. no, that so, was nice. I'm glad they won. All P.J. Fleck does is win bowl games as Gophers coach, 3-0 and now. Five consecutive bowl victories. Very nice. Damn right. So, all right, it is Reckless Speculation Thursday here on this episode of Mackie and Judd. Uh, we got our friend Doogie in from the 5 Eyewitness News Sports Department. You can also find him on the Scoop podcast. And I bring to you guys here – the Twitter feed of Don Cousins. All right, Don Cousins, the father of Kirk Cousins. Pastor Don Cousins. Pastor Don Cousins, yes. And you know how, and I don't know, maybe some people don't realize this. I, in fact, I know some people don't realize this, but you can go to anyone's profile and you can see what tweets they like, quote unquote. Like if you like a tweet, that is public record. Other people can see that you're liking those tweets. And that's how that's how some of these celebrities and like athletes get in trouble when like they'll like a porn stars like wasn't there a coach or something a few years ago that had like a hundred different like porn star likes or something that's not don cousins i will give him credit somebody hacked his account there remember it was just a few days ago 49ers general manager john lynch john right. lynch liked some sort of tweet that was i don't know if it was uh, it was some shot at jimmy garoppolo i don't, yes. I don't know the verbiage in that tweet but he claims it was a mistake or he got hacked, right? That's, he said he was in church. That's the easy out. He, he said, said he, accident, was, he accidentally at Christmas Eve mass. While at Christmas Eve mass, he had the phone out and he just accident, you know, accidentally liked a tweet that suggested Jimmy Garoppolo shouldn't get on the team plane to come home. It happens. So he got bored in church and uh, was just uh, you know, going through Jimmy Garoppolo Twitter. So, all right, th this is a sampling of some of the recent tweets that Don Cousins has liked on Twitter. Man, you had some free time while on that toilet, didn't you? No, somebody, somebody sent, somebody sent, a, a loyal listener sent me some of these. So there's like, there's some sleuths going through and doing this work for us. <laughs> Thank you, Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily listeners. All right, this is from Kyle. You give this exact Vikings roster to a competent head coach, and I guarantee you this team would be a highly seeded playoff team. Coaching matters. Don Cousins, like, this defense, injured or not, cannot close out a single game. Don Cousins, like, another miraculous Kirk Cousins comeback goes down as a loss. It will be added to that stupid, idiotic fourth quarter stat and narrative. I've seen Darnold, Cooper Rush, and Goff walk Mike Zimmer down the field this year. We're paying $5 million a year for that. Don Cousins, like. Uh, this one's actually from Judd. He liked a Judd Zolgad score north tweet. Time to move on. It's time for the Vikings to move on from Mike Zimmer. Don Cousins, like. Don and I. This is just a smattering. So, And by um, the way, we are 100% positive that is the Don Cousins is he Twitter yes. verified? I don't know if he's verified, but that's the account that other people 
in and around the Vikings. He's been, will... he's been tagged by people that like him. So yes. I think it's a, yeah. So, okay, so we've now, so we've now had, we've now had Adam Thielen's agent, Blake Barrett's go on a very public Twitter rant about two months ago, ripping the coaching staff. Right. And he, he you know, he even said tomorrow, I'm going to say even more. And then I think he backed off, but, uh, and we've got, so that, and so he's not just going rogue with that, right? Like his, client is probably voicing some frustration there well he's and the got same a lot of clients here. that play for the vikings correct and now you know you got don cousins you know basically saying yeah well my son would be a super bowl champion if not for this idiot head coach you know i'm 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 exaggerating a little bit there but what are your thoughts on that doogie to what extent from what you've heard have these players just completely checked out on mike zimmer well i don't know if they've necessarily checked out on zim a lot of these guys are under one-year contracts and or could be on the cusp of getting released. So they are playing for their next contract. So they are cognizant of needing to put good, you know, performances on film, right? Like other teams are watching as we approach March, as we approach the salary cap going way up. So a lot of guys are aware that they need to play well for their next contract. So they're going to continue to try and play well. You know, maybe that's in spite of of Zim. I will bring this up, Phil. I brought this up with Judd in passing in our Tuesday conversation. To me, an under talked about angle as we dissect whether Mike Zimmer will be back. Will Rick Spielman be back? Is the cousin Zimmer relationship? And like, I don't see how those two coexist beyond this year. I know that Zim has been pretty public about these, what, Wednesday meetings for 40 minutes or so with Kirk where they've actually met more this year than the previous multiple years combined. So they've worked on that relationship, but I'm just suggesting that it's hard for me to foresee a scenario where it's Zim and cousins here in 2022. One, certainly both. I just have a hard time seeing it. I I also think that the discussion about like players in mass checking out on Zim is more involved than that guys because i think what this is is it's not like kirk is like the most popular guy so it's not like the players and kirk are like the head coach stinks um i think what this is is zim fans because i i will contend this team is not quit i don't think they, they've quit so, so it's not, not quit. yeah they've not quit no. and we saw we saw guys quit on brad so like we've seen what that looks like um, but I think what makes this intriguing, and and Don adds to, to it, of course, by probably liking tweets, what makes this in, intriguing is I think there's still a large Zim faction of players that like Mike. I think there's a faction of players that probably are lukewarm to, to Mike. But I think there's factions of players also that feel the exact sa- same way, including not l- liking the coach, feel that way about the quarterback. And so that's where I think there's a division here. That's that, so so it's not it's not a galvanized, unified front against the coach or the quarterback. It's very fractured and split. And to me, on a weekly basis, that's apparent because guys guys aren't checked out and, and like screw it. But it also does not feel like there's any type of of, for lack of a better term, unified front here. It just feels like it's sort of like we're going to work and now we're back at work and now work's done. Um, so you don't have that. Hey, there, there's a there's one cause here t- to which we all can gravitate towards. That's that's the problem, I, I think, because this is a sport that requires passion. And I don't sense a passion here because I don't think that these people actually are are together in a common goal. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair analysis. It's very nuanced. It's very complicated. I think that is some of what the Wilfs are wrestling with. I'm still not convinced. And I've had some people go at me on social media, which is fine, but I'm still not convinced. Now, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I'm not convinced from a good amount of checking that as we sit here on the morning of December 30th, that the Wilfs know exactly what they are going to do. And that's that's all encompassing. That's Zim, that's Spielman, you know, and and I guess it trickles down from there. But, you know, particularly those two, I I just, I don't believe that. I've had people say, dudes, like, how would they not know? Like, the likelihood of this team making the playoffs is what, 8%, 10%? Lose Sunday night, in all likelihood, lose Sunday night. 
then it's pretty much what zero or 0.5 or whatever it might be. I mean, you know, for all mathematical purposes, lose Sunday night, probably eliminated, right? So like people have said, Dukes, like how would the Wilfs not know? This team isn't making the playoffs. You've alluded to preseason that the expectations were incredibly high, which is accurate, certainly higher than achieving the seven seed. You know, they had aspirations of winning the division, making a deep run in January. That means winning multiple playoff games. So they are not going to, to hit those goals. So people have said, hey, Dukes, the Wilfs have to know what they're going to do. But I think because of the nuance, because of the complications, uh, the Wilfs just at this moment don't know what to do. Let me also bring up, I brought this up Tuesday with Judd, but Phil, remember Everson Griffin? I can't remember if it was a tweet or an Instagram post. I think it was on Twitter, but Everson went wrong when, when he brought up the idea that Zim didn't want cousins. Remember that? Now, you mm-hmm. know, maybe he shouldn't have put that out there, but trust me, Everson knows plenty. And so to me, that tweet going back, I mean, a year plus, I think, uh, you know, I think it was when he was in Detroit or Dallas or even before he signed uh, with Dallas. Uh, trust me, there's there were some legs to what Everson was saying way back then. Also, I, God, there's so much more to unpack there, too. I feel like like people, you guys are blowing it out of proportion. I want I want everyone to just <laughs> put this into context for a second. OK, first of all, you had a veteran defensive player come out and disrespect a veteran quarterback to that level publicly, calling him ass on Twitter back in whenever it was, January or February, right? Kirk is ass. It was Twitter, you're right, yeah. Ask Mike Zimmer if he ever wanted Kirk or whatever the the tweet was. I mean, that is like stick a shiv in your rib cage disrespect to a veteran quarterback. And, and, And so, like, wow. Like, imagine someone ever saying that about Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson or Tom Brady, like... I'm sure those guys maybe have some bad relationships in their careers and stuff, but like, there's always a respect. You would never bury a guy like that. I've never seen it before. So that's part one. Wow. And then part two is the Vikings brought him back anyway. (laughs) Like the whole thing is amazing. Really? So he disrespected the most important, highly paid player on your team very publicly. And he's a role player now, right? And you and you and you you thought so little of Kirk, and so little about that dynamic. Just like it just apparently just doesn't matter that players feel that way about Kirk. That yeah, well we'll just bring him back. It's not going to affect things negatively in the locker room. I mean that whole dynamic is amazing to me. And anyone who feels like we're blowing it out of proportion is, I think, missing an important key to high level success in the NFL, which is chemistry and respect and all those things. Yeah, I mean, heck, we're not tweeting that stuff. We're just following the trail. And the trail's been there for a while. Judd, you're as plugged in as anybody when it comes to NFL contacts. You've been covering the NFL going back to your Star Tribune days for, you know, multiple decades. You know, practically, you know, longer than, you know, some of the current beat reporters are, you know, age-wise. I'm old. That they've been on the planet. Yeah, you I'm are old, an old yes. man. And yes. so your contacts are plentiful. And you've been suggesting for some time of, you know, issues internally, and that change is coming. And I have no reason to doubt your knowledge, your information. Well, but I, but I'm hearing now what you are, and and I know the Wilfs well enough to not be shocked. Um, I do think that there is more indecision. Like I think that they have done a lot of background checking. So so it's not that they're not prepared. So I don't want this to sound like they are not not thinking of change. Um, They've definitely uh, gone through some coaching names and GM names as well. But Dukes, where this where I'll come back to what you said, and I'm hearing the same thing. And I think you're exactly right is I think there's some cold feet as far as what they should change. And and they have a lot of potential people, i.e. Zimmer, Spielman. Heck, who knows? Maybe Kirk as well in their ear separately saying, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure? Hey, look, I, I did my job. Um, So so like we, I agree with Phil's point. How can you not have made your decision by now? To me, it's pretty simple. That being said, the Wilfs are also fans, and I don't think they necessarily trust themselves completely. 
And so I also think that despite the fact that they've done plenty of background work and checking on people, that they don't exactly know if they're going to pull the plug, which plug they're going to pull. And if you're a Vikings fan, that's concerning. So yes, I, I think all I think it can be true that the Wilfs have checked on lots of people and possibilities. I also think it can be true that given how they operate, they're very concerned about change, which I do think we have come to a point where if I was advising them, I would say you need to make a change here. Yeah, and my understanding is everything you just said, spot on. That being said, like I have a hard time believing it's complete status quo heading into 2022 i just i don't foresee call me nuts i don't foresee a scenario Uh where rick is the final decision maker in the front office zim is the head coach and kirk cousins is this team's quarterback i think some sort of change is coming Uh yeah uh here's another one aj found this one this is a liked tweet from don cousins on december 20th from uh, a kyle shonwell do we have screens do we have boots? I mean, what is with this play calling? Don Cousins, like. <laughs> well, I mean, there's been a lot of people questioning the play calling, right? There have been instances where, you know, going back to to Clint's dad calling the plays, where there were more of, of those types of schemes devised, right? And, and there have been times this year where we've been begging for plays along those lines, right? Justin Jefferson calling out the, the red zone play calling, on Sunday after eight passes in the red zone, he was targeted one time. So that has been an issue. And, you know, Andrew Janoko has been more hands-on going back to pretty much what the Chargers game, November 14th. You know, I think some others have had their fingerprints more on the offensive game planning as well going back to mid-November. But that being said, there are still issues in that regard. Yeah. Can I go? If you don't let me hop it. Oh, go ahead. In the five minutes that you guys were kind of talking about just uh-huh. very light internet sleuthing. I've seen that now. Kirk Cousins follows this Don Cousins account, so it's you know pretty confirmed it's, that that's the it's guy. A leg- it's a legit account. It, yeah, it's it's him. Why do you not protect your account? Because if you're protected, nobody can. Like these are still liked. I can go on there and I can look through everything right now, and all of these con- like arguably controversial ones about the coaching staff or other players or even about the defense not being able to. What he said was, I don't, uh, I don't think he cares. I mean, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, well, I think, I think he's, you may, know, he's going to say, Hey, yeah, I'm a fan, maybe a vested fan, but you know, I don't have all this intimate knowledge. Now, he, I'm sure he does. I mean, Kirk talk all the time. So, just, you know, yeah, Joe it just blows my mind. Rosemount, right? Like, I'm yeah. liking tweets. I'm a fan. I see something. I hit the like button. Interesting. Yeah. It just blows my mind that there's not a little bit more cover up to just the you know very obvious criticism and maybe maybe they want to have it out there or maybe they just yeah, don't I, think, care, I mean he wants he wants zimmer you want zimmer gone cousins yeah. probably wants zimmer gone AJ, i mean kirk cousins stop, so stop the don't stop the fun what are you talking about <laughs> don cousins put something out there today yourself rip people it's great um can, can i go down a a reckless speculation thursday well, go ahead. I mean, Path we've been breaking down likes on Twitter. What a world we live okay. in. So you go down okay. any rabbit hole you want. I, I'm going to go down this path. There, there was a there was a minor transaction made by the Vikings seemingly this week that I think is very intriguing. And that was the decision to bring Kyle Slaughter in and put him on the roster. And here's why I find it at least worthy of conversation, gents, because of this. Kyle Slaughter, we know for a fact. I think he's a decent kid. I think his old man's a pain in the ass. And his dad, we basically know, was at times when he was on the roster here, like calling the Vikings, like his dad. His dad was proactively, and his dad is on Twitter. His dad follows me, which means he is basically trying to find out what people are saying good and probably more so bad (laughs) about his kid. I find it very intriguing, though, that of, and I know that that he technically knows the system. Mannion's on the COVID list, but he's going to come off here unless he's sick, and hopefully he's not uh, very shortly. I find it very interesting that you signed a guy, that your GM signed a guy who there is no way on God's green earth that your coach likes having on the roster. I'm just saying that's an interesting one because, like, is Sloter going to? play if if he if 
Manya can't come back and Kirk tests positive before Sunday's game now um, or gets hurt. Kellen Mond almost certainly has to come in. I don't know. Of all of the backup quarterbacks like that you could find, veteran guys, of all those guys, Kyle Sloater, I find it to be a potentially very intriguing passive-aggressive move. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's an indictment on on Kellen Mond. I mean, I just I haven't heard a lot of well, positivity, at least from the coaching staff, that Kellen has this you know big bright future. Now, to me, that's premature. I mean, he's been scout team quarterback, you know, more often than not, right? Like, so how's he supposed to show off his skill set when he's trying to mimic you know Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray or some other quarterback during the week? So I think that's unfair. By no means am I writing any sort of final chapter on Kellen Mond's professional career. But I just I continue to hear buzz that, that the coaching staff just they don't see much there so far with with Kellen Mond. So I think it's more just an indictment on Mond in the event that Mannion doesn't clear protocols and is able to come back. Now, I would imagine with the new protocols in place, unless the symptoms are kicking his butt, which I have not heard that, that mm-hmm. he should be able to clear. Like Dalvin Cook cleared right now. I guess he was put on a little bit earlier than, than Mannion, but you know, Dalvin's unvaccinated. He cleared and, and symptoms didn't get the best of him. Uh, so he's good to go. By the way, let me add on that, Judd. I can't remember if I brought it up to you on mic or off mic, but there was some talk. If Dalvin under the old protocols, you know, cleared on Saturday, he was going to have to find his own transportation to green Bay. Now with these new protocols, the fact he cleared, my understanding is he will be on the team plane on Saturday. Mm. Uh, interesting stuff, man. Hey, real quick, uh, this scoop session presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been helping business owners for over 100 years. So if you're looking to maximize the success of your business and minimize potential risks, Federated helps all kinds of different businesses in different industries. You can find a full list of all the businesses Federated protects at federatedinsurance.com. And uh, remember at Federated, it's our business to protect Yours. All right, Doogie. Any, uh, I mean, if you got some more Viking stuff, we'll take it. Otherwise, let's go into the bag of scoops. What else you got for us? Well, let's go ladder. Let's go into the bag of scoops. You know, I brought up the Adam Thielen news Tuesday. In fact, Judd, when we were talking, he was actually, you know, on the operating table. Uh, the Vikings, uh, you broke it. Team doctor. Take a power. Yeah, I alluded to it. Yeah, yeah, I think Chad Graff maybe got it across the finish line, but yeah, I threw it out there. I guess initially. So yeah, I guess thanks for. For love, I don't think that's going to benefit wow. me in any form or fashion. I'm, I'm but yeah, I think no, it will. but I'm still. Think, you know what? You know what? It's a scoop. It's a. It qualifies as a scoop. It's a yeah, notch, oh yeah. dude. It's a yeah. notch. Yeah, the idea that even surgery was a possibility wasn't out Helps. there. I guess until I brought it up with you on Tuesday. So that's great. That's fine. All right, let's move on to the Wolves. Jared <laughs> Vanderbilt should clear protocols today. Get in a nice workout today. There is optimism that Jared Vanderbilt can return as soon as tomorrow night. At Utah, Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, symptoms not getting the best of them. So with these new protocols, they should clear pretty quick as well. So if they can't get back in action because of conditioning purposes by tomorrow night, I would imagine Sunday in Los Angeles, maybe Monday, they play the Clippers also in Los Angeles. I would think one of those two games, the Wolves should have their full complement of guys back. Get back that starting five. Anthony Edwards is good to go for tomorrow night, get back that starting five, that really good starting five of D'Lo, Bev, Ant, Vanderbilt, and Carl Anthony Towns. So Dean Evison signs a contract extension this morning. No surprise on that front. I don't think anybody's surprised that they got this deal done. It was just a matter of when, not if. So I was curious, who could be the next head coach in town to sign a contract extension? I wonder if it'll be Chris Finch. You know, when it was... When it was his time to take over back in February, Ryan Saunders dismissed, Finch takes over. It was reported in February that he signed a multi-year deal. I can dig a little bit deeper on that right now to suggest to you that, okay, he was under contract for the duration of last season when he took over, under contract for this season. Then there is some sort of option for the 22-23 season. But if the Wolves continue to play relatively well, let's say they can – They can advance past the play-in tournament or even just getting to the play-in tournament. The players really love playing for Chris Finch. I guess what I'm getting at is I can see a scenario come this summer, you know, and I know how much Sachin Gupta thinks of Chris Finch. That has been voiced to Alex Rodriguez, Mark Laurie, Glenn Taylor. Trust me, there's a lot of fans of Chris Finch over at Mayo Clinic Square. I can see a scenario where this summer Chris Finch is given a contract extension. 
You know, yeah. speak. So do, does Gupta get the title then? Like what, what's that step? And are, is he being judged right now by Glenn and company or, or is this sort sort of like, it's just a, a, a clock ticking until he's named potential Pobo president of the basketball operations by the Wolves. Well, he certainly wants it. I think money sure. plays a factor, Judd. Let's not forget, this is still Glenn Taylor's team for another two years. It's about two years from now, December of 2023, that Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez, assuming they get all the finances in order, there are still some questions about that, although there are even more questions. I had an NBA assistant coach text me the other day saying, hey, when are Mark and Alex moving the Wolves? I'm like, did you hear something new? He's like, I don't know. I just I keep hearing stuff that, that they're going to find a way to get out. I said, no. Now, if, if their bid for a new arena fails, like 2025 or 2026, okay, maybe let's revisit that conversation then because it's inevitable. They're going to, to seek out a new uh, arena, and I don't think they're going to completely privately finance that. So that's far down the road. But right now it's Glenn Taylor's team. So as long as Glenn is – is cutting the big fat checks. I don't know if Glenn wants to pay Elton Brand five or six million dollars a year to be his new president of operations. So you can get Sachin Gupta at a lesser number, but let's also see what Sachin does at the trade deadline. He is going to at least, well, he has been, although trade talk has been pretty dead the last you know week or so just because of all these COVID concerns. But Sachin is going to aggressively seek to upgrade the roster. By the February 10th deadline, he's got Torian Prince as an expiring contract, Jake Lehman. You start thinking about the 2022 first-round pick, the way they are playing, you know, would you be okay giving up pick 15 or 16? At this point, it doesn't look like it's going to be a top 10 pick, but it's a really good draft. So if the Wolves want to, now I think if they end up giving up their 2022 pick, they're getting back Miles Turner or Ben Simmons. But it's interesting to start thinking about that possibility. We've thought about it, but continue to think about it the way the Wolves have been playing that giving up that 2022 first round pick I'm not a big fan of that by the way but that that pick might be 15 16 17 14 it's not going to be pick three or five or what they gave Golden State pick seven so it's such and Gupta entertain the possibility of giving up his 2022 first I can tell you that in some talks with Philadelphia he has been open-minded to moving first round picks. I can't tell you though, if that's 2022 or if he's trying to start with the 2023 first round pick. I just want to say one thing real quick about this. So, you know, Glenn Taylor is still the majority owner. Oh, I mean, until he doesn't want to be anymore, but the plan is for is littered with a similar pattern of hire the wrong Pobo or coach, fire them with money remaining and then hire a replacement who's cheap, like a Ryan Saunders or promote Gupta to save money and I just want to, if, if, if Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie have any sway whatsoever, the decision on Gupta should have nothing to do with finances. If Elton Brand is the best available Pobo, he's better than Gupta and he's expensive, bring him in. It should have nothing. Wow, but we could save a million here or whatever. It's like, do you want to be a relevant team in the Western Conference or not? If there's a better president of basketball operations guy out there and it's going to cost you a couple million dollars extra or whatever just spend the money it's 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 mind-blowing to me that glenn can fall into the same pattern year after year for like 15 years doogie well i get that now let's keep in mind gupta was runner up a lot of people were surprised he did not get the sacramento president yeah and and maybe he's the guy maybe he's the guy so he is plenty qualified. He is universally liked. Like, you can't find anybody to say a bad word about Sachin Gupta. But what you said, Phil, let's remember, there was some sort of interest. Maybe it just was internal, that it never got out of the office. You know, a phone call to Masai Ujiri's agent or direct contact with Masai Ujiri until he signed his new deal with the Toronto Raptors. But, like, I like that line of thinking. You know, maybe it's some current team's president of operations that you offer a sliver of ownership. You offer that individual $10, $12 million a year. Get the best possible president of operations. Now, if that turns out to be Elton Brand, number two guy in Philadelphia right now, fine, so be it. But, like, don't just aim for some team's number two. Go aim for some team's number one. Pluck him away from his current situation, especially if his contract is expiring. They would have knowledge of guys who have contracts expiring after the season. So... I understand where you're coming from, but I'm just saying Sachin Gupta is plenty qualified for this job.
I guess my point, though, in, in this uh, discussion is that I wouldn't extend Finch unless I, if I was going to go outside now, possibly for my Pobo, I would probably not extend Finch until that person has the job. Well, so yes. that person can come in and say, I really like Chris Finch or what are you doing? Accurate. And um, that's where I guess when I'm alluding to that idea, yeah. I guess I'm alluding to the idea that that I can see Suchin Gupta staying on board, that sure. Gupta loves Finch, that that Gupta and Finch would continue to to lead the way in the coming years. Yeah. All right. Rapid fire scoops here to close it out, Dukes. You know what? I really don't have much else. Uh, that's fine. No, with, good. That's yeah, good I was stuff. texting with one of my baseball agent friends. Just curious when Twins coaches will start working with these non-40 man guys. Sounds like around January 30th. They will summon a lot of these guys to Fort Myers end of January for workouts, ramped up workouts with with coaches. Remember, Twins coaches can work with guys as long as they're not on the 40 man roster. As of now, the Gopher men's basketball team is planning to play Illinois on Sunday. They have not been told of an Illini COVID outbreak. The Illinois did have to cancel its game last night because of COVID concerns. There will be some NBA scouts in the building on Sunday, presuming the game does take play. So excited to watch the Gophers play again after this after this mini break, after their game last night was canceled because Alcorn State, who made it to town, then had a few positive tests, and Alcorn State had to notify the Gophers late morning, early afternoon yesterday that the game last night would be off. So Alcorn mm-hmm. State got here? They I did didn't realize here. they got here. Oh yeah. My God. Okay. What a mess. Cool. All right, Dukes. Happy holidays, man. Thanks for the scoop session, and uh, we'll see you next year. Hey, Happy New Year, Phil. Glad you're better. <laughs> All right. Bye, All right. That, Bye and that's, uh, that's a wrap on Mackie and Judd here as well. Reckless Speculation Thursday presented by Federated. Don't forget to check out Vikings Ventline on the Purple Daily YouTube channel right after Vikings Packers finish up on Sunday night. See you guys.